fact, all of them aren't rich, a lot of them are poor. Come around and you never know your luck. And if I, they might feel so sorry that they get the checkbook out. I have to say, we never have. It's been rather a disappointment. But I think one has to persevere. I remember once the doorbell rang at about seven o'clock at night. I opened it and this guy who reckoned he was and said he lived on Fifth Avenue and I got awfully excited. But Kashanda thought he had AIDS. I wasn't nearly so excited as I was. I said, that's an extra reason to be excited. It means going to die soon. So if, you <laughs> <laughs> so if only he really nice him, and he might remember us in his will. Well, I think he probably is dead now, and he certainly didn't remember us in his will, so that was a bit of a waste of time. And Kachanda threw away the glass, which he'd been drinking out of, and every plate he had touched, in case we contacted AIDS. In the absence of a wealthy benefactor, Francis is forever dreaming up new ways to make money from the estate. If it's a bit of amusement, and there's a fiver to be earned as well, I'll give it a crack. I had a friend who was what they call a glamour photographer, and he brought Playboy down here on numerous occasions, and other magazines as well. Children find it quite amusing when they came down to see girls without their clothes on. They thought they were tremendously funny. Sometimes you get some rare oddities. I mean, we had these people around the other day who wanted to come and see the house because they had this plan to do a sort of, I think it was a sort of coach parties of people visiting haunted houses or something like that. I've always thought that when I die, I'll try and come back as a ghost or to help the finances because if you give dinner parties where a ghost would actually clear away the food, the price would be no object to various people, you know, and the finances would be solved at once. Spooks one day and the management training for one the week following. I have to say, a bigger bunch of wankers I've never met. <laughs> People always ask me here, yeah. I never really envisage ever asking for a grant from a taxpayer to help maintain this house. Houses like this. As a private owner, I make all the decisions. If I want to paint the whole bloody thing bright orange with yellow, I can. You know, we've all learnt our lesson, which is basically that, on the whole, the people who are part of English heritage and the like are a load of wankers. Where did that come from? Oh, Ed, how do you think that fell off? It fell off because we were playing cricket. Should we go and get some wood glue? Come on. Why people think it's part of English heritage when all the people have tried to do is either tax it into the ground or, back in the Civil War, try to batter it into the ground with bloody cannon. Oh, I know solitaire. Well, that means it fucking ain't their heritage, it's my heritage. My great-great-grandfather bishop in the times when bishops were important, unlike now. Right, this is Father Colonel Baldwin. This is Sir Baldwin Fulford. Brother, I think, of my great-great-great-great-grandmother, who was the only prime minister to be assassinated. <laughs> right, this is bad Baldwin. Squandered money like it was going out of fact picture of a fucking filth picture, not the fucking me. <laughs> he was equally extravagant and foolish, and never spent. For years, that portrait used to live upstairs in the attic with his face turned to the wall. So it was obviously considered a major disgrace. Yeah, well, we're all called Francis, really. It's a sort of family tradition. When I was born, my mother had a choice. I could either be called Francis or Baldwin. And she chose Francis. Now, I'm a bit upset about that. I quite like to be Baldwin. Nobody else is Baldwin. Well, they are the odd other Francis's. But I suppose she thought, she said she thought, quite rightly, that I'd have been christened Baldy at school. I thought perhaps fatty and when I was thicky and full of food and all sorts of things. And I did end up, I ended up being called fucker too. Well, I'm not waiting for your fucking mother one minute longer. Pain in the arm. The only 
way to keep and a say like this together is not to take your eye off the ball, to be careful, not to gamble. Um, and that's why we've held our land and our house for 800 years. Not that is, but we haven't had the odd complete credit. But luckily, we haven't had two in a row. I mean, the old rule of thumb is a family and a state can survive one idiot, but can't survive two. Being a landowner, one spends an enormous amount of one's waking hours planning one's own death. It's rather a sort of morbid factor of land ownership that you want to die when it's the most tax-efficient time to die. When Francis does die, his daughter and his two youngest sons will have to find another house to wreck. The whole of the great Fulford estate will go to his eldest son, Arthur. I've never made any secret, no, no, there's no secret between my children that Arthur will inherit this and virtually the whole place. That's called primogentia, all goes to the eldest boy. I received it because I was the only boy and my elder sister's got nothing very much. And my father received it, although he had two brothers and so on and so on, right back into the dim and distant memory of time. And the only reason why this place exists in this current form is because primogentia was always rigidly adhered to. In other words, for me to suddenly break the rule and say it's unfair is a load of bollocks. It's not unfair, it's totally fair, because I give as I received, and it would be totally unfair to my ancestors for me to break that pledge. So it goes to Arthur. Paul! Nobody groomed me for the job, or if my father was grooming me, I didn't really realise it was happening, and I rather think that's the best way to groom anybody for a job is not to go and make a great song and dance about it and training. You've got to show by example and aptitude. OK, Arthur. Ah, oh, I can't hit these bloody things. You're so rubbish. I know. Completely shit. You need to love a place like this. You've got to love the landscape, love the house, and you've got to feel for it. If you do that, I think he does. Well, I don't think any problem. You're so rubbish. I suppose an estate like this and a house like this is rather like um, a woman who spends too much bloody money. You know, you've got to love her, otherwise you'd kick her out, wouldn't you? Telephone's always ringing, or the post is always bringing some letter from individuals who specialise in old buildings and write to ask if they can come and poke their noses round. I was thinking. Houses tell you something about their owners, and uh, I think this chandelier with uh, one, two, three, four bulbs present out of 20 tells us something. Architectural historian Ptolemy Dean is at Great Fulford to look over the semi-derelict state of the house and to give Francis his expert opinion. Hi. Ah, ah, you've got here. Yes. How do you do? I'm sorry I have not been around, but you've had a bit of a... Walk, have you already? Architects and structural engineers do tend to see something and think, gosh, help, this could fall down tomorrow. It could fall down tomorrow and it could fall down in a hundred years' time. I think we'll bet on it falling down in a hundred years' time because just now there is no money in the kitty to pay for it today. A lot of damp, isn't there? What? A lot of damp in the house. No, just the central heating's not on. Oh, right. So the <laughs> peeling of paint. Oh, the peeling of paint, yes. Well, the paint is old, so it peels a bit. He goes around and he sees, you know, oh, well, water's been coming in there, water's been, what's been coming in there? Years ago. A little bit of excitement up here. Oh, it's whatever. You know, it's all old stuff. Gosh, it's just been stuck together with sort of... To you. It's rather like reading the end of a story and not having read the final chapter of the saga so far. But he hasn't read the 30, or in my case, the 51 chapters which preceded it, in other words, my life. So what happened here? The ceiling's partly renewed, isn't it? Yes, we were starting doing things to it, and, um, let me stop. It's nothing bad, Nick, actually. Look at 